Hello and welcome to Alan History Nerd. In this video I'm going to look at the second assessment objective AO2 for A-level politics and try and explain exactly how you get good marks on this particular aspect. This links with the video I've already done on AO1 and an upcoming one on AO3 and having got, put all those together you'll be able to see how you get marks in all the different aspects of the mark scheme in A-level politics. I've also produced videos on how to do the different questions and how to come up come out with an A slash A star along with loads and loads of content videos as well. So if you haven't done that already, subscribe and check out all those different videos. So AO2 is the, the aspect of the mark scheme that asks you to analyze. And the, the blurb in the spec says, analyze aspects of politics and political information, including relations and parallels, connections and similarities and differences. And I highlighted that bit at the end because I think that's probably the most important part of it, along with the word analyze. Because if you make those connections between the different um, sides of the argument and you, you are starting to assess them and analyze them, then that is what's going to pick up your marks in AO2. And particularly, actually, with the the question one and question two in component three, then it very much is about comparison. And also with the uh, ideas or ideology essays, it's connecting the different threads of the ideology together, whether that's picking out similarities or picking out differences, again, is the, the, the key aspect of the analysis in that. Now, if we go through the, the level descriptors, and generally speaking, though, there's pretty much the same going through the different questions. Level one says limited comparative analysis. And that's why, again, you can see why I, I've picked up the ideas of similarities and differences. Level two is some emerging, emerging comparative analysis. Level three is mostly focused comparative analysis. Level four is consistent comparative analysis. And level five is perceptive comparative analysis. So the demands at level five in particular are incredibly high. Though looking at um, some of the grade boundaries uh, from recent exams, then, then actually you can get very, very top grades without necessarily ever getting into um, level five. Though obviously it's what we should be aiming for. So <coughs> level one, there's not going to be very much analysis in it at all. And that what you might do is, is people just tell the story of um, whatever it is bit of politics they're talking about. And they, 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 there might be content in it, it's called in AO1, but they're, they're not really analysing it. They're not really comparing one side of an argument to another. They're not really trying to, to uh, unpick and evaluate what is there. <clears throat> Now, level three in the middle, mostly focused comparative analysis. And, and, and essentially, that means somebody's had a decent go at it. So they, they are trying to pick out parallels, connections, similarities and differences, whatever, whatever the question is demanding. And it might not be earth shattering and it might not be highly perceptive. But it's, if it's highly perceptive, it would be level five. So you wouldn't expect that in the middle levels. Now, level four, I think it is one of those ones that you can kind of really push yourself into because it, what it says is consistent comparative analysis. So if you are making sure, right, I'm thinking about AO2 when I'm writing, am I comparing the two sides of the argument? Am I comparing the UK and the US? Am I comparing the um, the two different types of, uh, of liberalism? And if you're doing that, then you are really going to be showing on a consistent level you're doing it and that you are going to be uh, worthy of level four for AO2. So as I've said, AO2 is about your ability to compare points to counterpoints, one type of analogy to another, aspects of US against aspects of the UK. Now it's worth a lot of marks. So it's worth 10 out of the 30 in the source questions, 10 out of the 30 in the essays, 8 out of 24 in the ideology essays, and then 6 out of 12 on question 1 and question 2 in component 3. So it's a really important thing to get absolutely sorted. So on the sources, so candidates should focus their comparison on analysing the different opinions in the source. They should look at different views that arise from the source and how these lay the foundations for a judgment is what the, the spec says. It also says that there is no AO2 rewarded if it relates to additional points raised by the student which are not featured in the source. So what does all this mean? Well, essentially <coughs> what it means is, is there are going to be points and counterpoints in the um, in the the different um, in the source, there'll be two sides of the argument, and you, you need to be pairing those up. And that that is, is something I would suggest you do with a source question: is you go through, you find your three points on one side, your three points on the other, you then match them and go right. I'm going to deal with those two together. 
and they should be opposite of each other or, or clash in some way and it's teasing that out that's going to get you your level two marks so your AO2 marks so so what, what would one look like? So this is one I've, I've, I've written out. So th this is on a source question about the possibility of using proportional representation and, con and containing the point proportional representation would encourage more people to vote and improve the chances of a more reflective parliament. And this is what my, my part of AO2 would look like. This means that under first past the post, governments and MPs gain an election with less than 50% of the vote. Uh, and, and therefore, this is undemocratic. <coughs> as they exercise the majority of power with a minority vote. This could be remedied by the introduction of proportional representation, meaning that every vote would count equally and therefore people's willingness to vote would increase and governments would hold majority support. So I've done some analysis up until that point, looking at, at the point that I've made and the evidence I would, I would have put in. And again, looking at the AO1 one, you can see the kind of evidence I would have put in on that one. The next bit is the comparative bit. However, this needs to be balanced against the fact that under PR, deals are done between parties after elections, uh, as no party generally holds a majority, uh, which is undemocratic. Can you explain how, that, again, the, the, at that stage, that the um, the voter doesn't have a choice. They don't. They, they, the voice, the voter can't choose what kind of coalition that it goes into. So, a party they support might end up going in um, into coalition with the party they strongly dislike. So we've got the two aspects of AO2 in there. One is the analysis of the, the content that has just been put in and what it shows and why why it matches um, the question. And then the second one is, is, is starting to bring in a counterpoint and compare. Uh, again, that is um, one of the, the key skills in this. It's not necessarily um, involving a huge amount of um, words. It's not necessarily involving uh, that huge amount of, of kind of earth shattering insight, but it is doing what it show, what it asks you to do in the spec. It's very similar in essays, actually, other than obviously you've got to come up with all the points yourself. Um, and it talks about analysis as it's been part of scrutiny and probing the, the, the answer. Um, it's 10 marks. Candidates should form an analytical uh, views with support or reject the, the view presented in the question. So you can argue for and against um, what, what the proposition. Um, they should look at different perspectives that arise from the, the view presented by the question and show how these lay the foundation for judgment. So again, we've got that aspect where you need to be comparing point and counterpoint to lay the foundation for you to make a judgment about which side is strongest. So what would this look like? So on an essay about only the Labour Party and Conservative Party um, mattering, I saw I, I I'll have put some detail in about the size of the, the parties and the finances. And so again, if you want to have a look at what that kind of content will look at, look at the AO1 video. The size of members, volunteers and paid workers, as well as the scope of funding for the major parties means continued dominance for them. At the election time, the Conservative and Labour Party are able to flood conventional and social media with promotional content that other parties can't. They can get more people out canvassing, they can carry out more analysis and put more resources into marginal seats. All that means that other parties are swamped and cannot compete. So again, I've done that, that probing, that analysis bit of the point suggesting um, that the finances and size of the membership of these parties means that they're dominant. And I'm now doing that connection bit that to to showing that that balance and that understanding by connecting another point. However, it is it is not always the case that other parties cannot compete financially. And then I would then go into some A or one bit and I'd talk about um, all the money that UKIP received uh, fighting those elections to only 15, 2017. And then I would go, so I'd go into AO1 and then I would come back and I would analyse uh, that. And at the end of this section, then would be my AO3 bit, which would be my judgment about which side of those arguments, um, which of those two arguments ultimately is the strongest. So again, it, this is, is a kind of building that structure well, I've made a point. I go in, which go then go into the AO1 bit, the detail, and analyse that detail. I then connect it to a counterpoint, which is more AO2 stuff. Then I do the AO1 lump, and then I do some more analysis, which is more AO2, and then I link it, go into AO3. 
ideas essays. Well, the, the, these ones, I think, really lend themselves. In, I think on, on this one, actually, the AO2 is clearer than it is in the, the conventional essays and the um, uh, and the sources. So candidates should form analytical views which support or reject the view presented in the question. They should look at the different perspectives that arise from the question and show how these lay the foundation for judgment. You're comparing different factions within the ideology and clearly how explaining how they are similar or different. And therefore, you know, it, it's really clear when you're doing AO2, I think, in the ideas essay, because you're kind of going to be, this is the point we're getting into going, that ideology says this, this, this part of the ideology says that. So let's have a, a look at examples to kind of build on that. So this is a, a, a question about socialism uh, and the economy. Uh, and it, I'm making a point about socialists attract, uh, attaching importance to how the economy operates as essentially as it is essential in setting out the basic structure of society and the life chances of the people. All socialists believe in a fairer, uh, uh, fairer economy. It mean, also, socialists believe a fairer economy means a fairer society and wider ownership will result in a fairer society. This is demonstrated through Marx's idea of economic determinism and through uh, Crossland's idea of a mixed economy that leads to opportunity for all. The strength of belief uh, about the need to transform the economy is different, but fundamentally uh, the idea of fairness spreading from economy to society is shared among socialists. So on what I've done on this, I've got diff two different key thinkers and two different strands, and I've pulled them together. So obviously Crossland uh, it, it is social democrat, whilst uh, Marx is uh, a revolutionary socialist. So <clears throat> what I can show in this is that socialism is fairly united. And now I might go into more of a judgment about how united they are. And, and then this is often one of the difficulty bits in terms of absolutely breaking it down is where AO2 ends and AO3 begins, because that's quite a blurred line. So a bit more continuing from the end of this would take you into your AO3 bit. On the US question one, so this is component three, um, 1A or 1B, the task is to probe and scrutinize the material <coughs> you have introduced in AO1. Uh, offer insight and criticism of the points you have raised in AO1. Uh, depending on the question, there will be a need to show similarities or differences between the US and the UK. So th the question tends to be one or the other. You do get the odd question, which is both. It, it can be one of those traps that people can fall into because, I mean, there was one where they asked about uh, constitutions and how similar they were. And obviously what loads and loads of students did was they wrote about how different they were, which wasn't the question and, and they didn't get any credit. So it's better to be mindful of the question. And then the, the, the example I actually say to you is be careful not to be drawn in, drawn to make conclusions or form a judgment. This is not required and, it's a wa and wastes time. And obviously time is a very precious thing in an exam. So you aren't going to get into and going the UK system is better or the US system is better. That's not what it's asking you to do. So what should this look like? So on the question about the powers of the legislatures in, in, uh, in the US and UK being limited in different ways, um, and, and so there has been detail already against the AO1 video on the UK, UK's differences in powers between uh, the commons and the laws, lords. The difference in power is a key difference between the upper and, and lower houses only in the UK. It is not the case in, in the US where the two houses are far more equal and neither can dominate the other, often leading to gridlock. The US legislature is limited in a different way. Rather than being different in terms of amount of power, they have different roles. And then the AO1 bit would then kick in again. I'd go into, um, for example, the um, scrutiny over appointments that they, the uh, Senate has, but the, uh, the House doesn't. Or the ratifying of treaties, which is the power that, that the Senate has and the, uh, and the House doesn't. So in this, what I'm doing, the AO2 is the, is the link bit. It, so I've, start, I've again, I've done a bit of analysis of, of the, the details I've, I've given about the difference powers in the UK, and then I am contrasting it um, with, uh, with, with the US. Uh, and I am dealing with the, what it's asking me to do, which it, it, it is, it, is giving examples of how they are limited in different ways. It, it again, it doesn't seem like a great deal, but I, essentially, this is, as I understand it, is what AO2 is asking you um, to do, and again, should pick you up uh, those marks in a very solid way. 
In question two, it's all very similar. Um, again, analyze of AO1 brought forward. Um, the linkage covers differences, the difference in similarities that we made. Um, and you're often analyzing and probing comparisons that might be favorable, might be otherwise between the US and the UK. You have to use at least one um, comparative theory, which is one of the differences in question two. And again, it's the same as, as question one. There are no AO3 marks. There's no conclusion, no, no overall judgment required. So in the, this example, what, what I've done is I, I've looked at um, the legislative powers of, of US Congress uh, and UK Parliament. There's been AO1 content going through the impact of separation of powers uh, on the US Congress's ability to legislate. Right, so the UK lacks the same separation of powers and therefore does not have the same ability to legislate without the consent of the executive. This can be viewed through the structural approach uh, as it is as it is due to the structures created uh, by the two constitutions, meaning that the relationship between the legislature and the executives are different. Both have the power to legislate, but in the UK, the, the executive is embedded in and dominates the lower house. So really here, the AO2 bit is that comparison. It, it, it's bringing in the um, the, the the approach the, in this case the structural approach to explain the difference uh, between the two countries which you've been asked about in the question so the AO1 will be the detail about how it works but the, the AO2 bit here is the comparison between the two answering the question and bringing in um, the approach and again, it could be rational, it could be cultural and, and oh, it could be like I've used in this one it could be structural which um, often is really useful in, in any US questions so that, that you've got any connection back to the way the system's been set up in the Constitution. So I hope that's been uh, helpful for you and has given you some insight into what AO2 is and so if you're getting feedback either well from myself or from your, your teacher um, saying right okay what you need to do is you need to go and look back and look at your AO2 then you can go back to this video go right okay what would a, what, what would decent AO2 um, look like does what I've just written in my essay look like this compare the two and then hopefully that will help you do um, some improvement work and make sure that next time your essays hit the mark again it, this is part of my uh, A-level uh, politics playlist, which in which I'm aiming to cover not only uh, all the content of the specification, but all the different skills required. Make sure you subscribe, turn on notifications, and therefore pick up more of my videos as I go through. Thank you very much for watching.